episode 19 title of the course is advanced materials science unit 5 in this episode 19 we will continue the domain theory of ferromagnetism yes exchange energy it is the energy associated with quantum mechanical coupling that aligns the individual atomic dipoles within the single domain it arises from interaction of electron spin it depends upon the interatomic distance crystal anisotropic energy we know that the crystal is anisotropic crystal anisotropic energy arises from the different of energy required for magnetization along two different directions in a single crystal thus the energy required for magnetization is a function of crystal orientation the difference in energy between the hard one 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 direction and the ec one zero zero in body center cubic ion is about 1.4 into 10 to the power 4 joule per meter cube that means the excess work done in magnetizing a specimen to saturation in 111 direction compared to 100 direction is about 1.4 into 10 to the power 4 joule per meter cube and this is the anisotropic energy of ion in phase center cubic nickel reverse its true for nickel 111 direction is the EC direction the EC direction of nickel or body diagonal this energy is very important to determine the character of domain boundary now we move on to domain wall energy or black wall energy it is the sum of contributions from the exchange and crystalline anisotropy energy in the domain wall region thickness of the wall is approximately 1000 Armstrong the boundary between two domains is known as black wall the next one is magnetostatic energy when a ferromagnetic substance produces an external field magnetic potential energy or magnetostatic energy is present in the material this is due to the presence of resultant dipole movement in the material even in the absence of external magnetic field this energy is favorable or unfavorable for domain growth if the magnetic movement present in the material is along the direction of magnetization or not magnetostrictivity energy the change in length along the direction of magnetization of a domain solid refers to magnetostrictions notably we can see this in nickel and ferrites so if a rod or tube of a nickel is brought into a magnetic field parallel to its length its length changes slightly the changes in length is independent of the sign of the field and may be either decrease or an increase depending upon the nature of the material the change in length of the order of one part in a million if a nickel rod is in bought in alternate field it is shortened periodically by magnetization but the length of the rod increases in the presence of magnetic field the rod thus vibrates with frequency which is double that of alternating field on the other hand if the rod is suitably magnetized before being inserted in the alternating field then the mechanical change in length will be in step with the alternating frequency in such a case if the frequency of the alternating field coincides with the natural frequency of the vibration of rod resonance will occur and the rod will oscillate vigorously the resonance vibration frequency of the rod depends on its length the shorter the rod the higher its resonance frequency in actual practice it is difficult to make magnetostrictivity 
vibrator with a very short rod so in the production of ultrasonic waves this magnetostriction principle is adopted and using long rods one can produce ultrasonic waves with low frequency further this principle is also followed in magnetostriction transducer which are used in mechanical filters are used in the single side band transmission to get very narrow band of frequency thus the magnetostrictivity energy is the energy due to the mechanical stresses generated by magnetostriction in the domain this energy will affect the growth of domains reversible and irreversible domains suppose if apply a small external fin on the ferromagnetic specimen the domain wall is displaced slightly away from the minimum energy but it return to the original position when the field is removed this gives a reversible domain in larger external field the domain wall may be shifted to more distance position where the energy curve has passed through a maximum and then minimize on removing the field the domain wall cannot cross the energy maximum and so it is unable to return to its initial position this gives an reversible domain wall movement if the material is free from strains and inclusions the greater the size of reversible wall movement and small external field is required to produce a movement thus the material has a large initial permeability and it is soft magnetic material if the material has strains inclusions high external field is required to produce a movement of domain wall and so the material is hard magnetic material and it is high force act histories histories of ferromagnetic material refers to the lack of magnetization or magnetic induction behind the magnetizing field thus the reversible bh characteristics ferromagnetic material is known as hysteresis the hysteresis loop a b c d e a is a curve showing the change in magnetic induction of a ferromagnetic material to which an external field is applied as an intensity of this field is varied from hs to minus hs and back again hysteresis loss is a loss of energy in taking ferromagnetic body through a cycle of magnetization and this loss is represented by the area enclosed by hysteresis loop when the magnetizing field is reduced to zero the magnetic induced of the material does not comes to zero and this value of magnetic induction is called residual magnetism or retentivity thus the retentivity of the specimen is defined as magnetic induction retained by the specimen when the magnetizing field is re- reduced from the saturation value to the zero similarly the force and the magnetic specimen is the magnitude of the demagnetizing field required to re- reduce the residual magnetism is zero a study of hysteresis loop different magnetic material helps us to know their magnetic property for example let us see the hysteresis of curve for soft iron and steel from the loop we are able to get the following result the area of the loop for steel is greater than that of soft iron showing a higher energy loss per cycle per meter cube for steel the bh curve is for soft iron indicating quick magnetization further the magnetizing field necessary to saturate the soft iron is much smaller than that of steel further permeability and susceptibility are greater for soft iron a greater retentivity is appeared in the case of steel 
for steel for iron it shows that a greater demagnetizing force is required for steel to destroy the residual magnetic induction therefore soft iron is used to electromagnetic where a high value of magnetic induction is required further since the hysteresis loss is very small it is also used in cores of transformers dynamos and telephones steel is used in making permanent magnet because it will not to be easily demagnetized when a field is applied domain where magnetization is parallel or at a small angle with the field growth at the expense of those where magnetization in anti parallel so that boundary between domains is replaced initially oa the magnetization of substance as wall proceed by small reversible boundary displacement but part ab of the magnetization curve is due to larger irreversible displacement above the knee of the curve bs magnetization pro proceeds by rotation of direction magnetization of old domains and such a process is rather difficult and the increase in magnetization is relatively slow when the applied field is reduced there is little change in the domain structure so that the magnetic induction or magnetization remains quite high until high reverse field are applied further even when the external field is zero there is residual magnetization in the specimen and that can be destroyed by applying a high reverse field thus the reversible and irreversible domain wall movement give rises to hysteresis in the ferromagnetic material next we move on to brackeson effect this effect refers to the variation of the energy of domain walls with respect to the position of the wall and this variation clearly represents an impedance to its motion or a restoring force which opposes the pressure due to the applied field the energy of the domain wall is a function of their position the wall will initially be in a tough at x1 and will be forced uphill until a point inflection is at x2 by an applied field beyond the displacement the wall will move freely in the field to x3 at which the value do e by do x is the same this is called backeson effect in a perfect crystal there should be no such energy variation and consequently the susceptibility should be unlimited in the absence of external demagnetizing effect in a real crystal imperfection will give rise to finite and also limit the susceptibility then we move on to experimental evidence of domains the domain structure was observed in 1931 using colloidal iron oxide domain boundaries the photo micrography they are obtained using better colloidal iron oxide technique the illustration the growth of favorable domain in an iron single crystal when the field is increased the direct evidence for the existence of domain structure is obtained from this bitter powder pattern in this technique a drop of colloidal suspension of finally divided ferromagnetic powder is allowed to separate over a prepared surface ferromagnetic material under investigation the colloidal particle as observed under microscope collect along the domain boundaries since strong local magnetic field near these domains boundaries when the sample is kept in the magnetic field the domain boundaries are shifted depending upon the direction of applied magnetic field when the intensity of the magnetic field increases 
the area of the favorable domain increases by shifting domain boundaries then we move on to hard magnetic material the important points of hard magnetic material is hard magnetic materials are magnetic materials which cannot e be easily magnetized and demagnetized they have large hysteresis loss due to the large hysteresis loop area these materials have small values for permeability and susceptibility the eddy current loss is more due to its smaller resistivity in a hard magnetic material the domain wall movement is difficult owing the crystal imperfection and is reversible in nature the retentivity are large in this material the irregularities that means in the crystal structure like mechanical strain will be more its magnetostatic energy is large these are produced by heating the material and then plugging it suddenly into cold oil quenching process that means which sets up to internal stresses so mechanical strains are purposely introduced to make it hard magnetic material examples of the hard magnetic materials are alnico alloys cunifice cunicos and etc these are the used to produce permanent magnets permanent magnet are used in magnetic detectors microphones flux meters voltage regulators damping device and magnetic separators then we move on to soft magnetic material soft magnetic material or magnetic material which can be easily magnetized and demagnetized they have small hysteresis loss due to the small hysteresis loop area these materials have large values for permeability and susceptibility the eddy current loss is more due to its higher resistivity to obtain soft magnetic material the domain walls must be able to move easily reversibly so that magnetization changes by large amount of small changes in the magnetizing field the retentivity are very small these materials are free from irregularities in the crystal structure like strains or impurities its magnetostatic energy is very small these are manufactured as follow heating the pure material to a temperature where sufficient movement of the atoms is possible for them to settle into an order lattice followed by slow cooling that means annealing process so as not to disturb it example iron silicon alloy ferrous nickel alloy ferrite and garnets etc these are used in electromagnetic machineries and in the transformer cores these are used in switching circuits microwave isolators shift registers and matrix storage of computers and produces electromagnets important application of the soft magnetic material the soft magnetic materials are used in electromagnetic machineries and transformers magnetic cores for use in alternating magnetic fields like those for transformers and rotating electrical machines are made from material who is stress loop are narrow in order to keep hysteresis loss low hysteresis loss is directly proportional to area enclosed in the hysteresis loop for the material frequency of the alternating current and volume of the material alternating magnetic field induce an emf in the core and cause an electric current to flow in them this current is called eddy current and power loss which appears in the form of heat due to this eddy current is called eddy current loss eddy current loss is inversely proportional to resistivity of core material and directly proportional to square of maximum flux density frequency of ac supply 
and thickness of each lamination of the core thus the core material should have low stresses loss and low eddy current loss we can get the property from soft magnetic materials with high resistivity iron silicon fesi alloy this alloy has more resistivity than pure iron therefore 4% of silicon is introduced so it is will reduce the eddy current loss and other transformer core losses these alloys will be suitable for operation at power frequency of 50 to 60 cycles per second these are not suitable where high sensitivity and fieldity are required iron nickel alloy that means feni alloy the above said property are improved in this by magnetic annealing these alloys can be used up audio frequencies suppose if we want to high sensitivity and high fieldity in and communication equipment then we can use feni alloy such as permoly that means 45% nickel plus 55% iron and supreme alloy that means 79% of nickel plus 16% of iron plus 5% of molybdenum this have a highly initial permeability than fi fesi alloy this tends to reduce the area under the stresses loop enabling the use at higher frequency mu metal 77% of ni plus 16% of iron plus 5% of copper and 2% of chromium is also an important nickel alloy ferrites and garnets for high frequency ferrites and for very high frequency garnets are used since the above said alloy will not be used due to their heavy eddy current losses but ferrites and garnets have high electrical resistivity than that of alloys this reduces the eddy current losses nickel zinc ferrite are used for audio and tv transformers magnesium manganese ferrites with high resistivity are used in microwave isolators in gigahertz and megahertz range with a higher manganese and magnesium ratio then the above ferrite has nearly rectangular hysteresis loop and is used for memory cores in computer ferrites with large magnetostrictive effects are used in the electrochemical transducer and to produce ultrasonic waves ferrex cube it is one of the soft magnetic material and it is also ferrite it has square hysteresis loop these have high permeability and high resistivity they are used in switching circuit and in matrix storage and shift resistor of computers example magnesium manganese ferrite that means 50% of mgo plus 50% of mno fe23 structure of ferrite ferrites are modified structure of iron with no carbon and are good example of ferri magnetism in which the spin adjustment iron in the presence of magnetic field are in opposite senses and with different magnitudes they are made from ceramic ferromagnetic compounds mechanically it has pure iron character it has low tensile strength and it is a brittle soft and non machinable one in this all valence electron are tied up by ionic bonding and these are bad conductor with high resistivity of 10 to the power 11 ohm meter ferrites are manufactured by powder metallurgical process by mixing compacting and then sintering at high temperature followed by age hardening in magnetic field 
these are mainly used in transformer cores television scanning coils memory device and high speed switches the general formula is x f e 2 o 4 where x may be a metal as mg mn or zn this material have low eddy current losses and low hysteresis losses normally there are two types of structures present in the ferrites types of interaction present in the ferrites neil suggested that all interaction in the ferrites are anti ferromagnetic in sign but that the ab interaction is considerably strong then the aa or bb interaction if nickel ferrite is truly ferromagnetic then 12 bohr magnetrons should be present in that that means 7 bohr magnetron in b side and 5 bohr magnetron in a side since in a side there is ferric ion and in b side there are ferric and nickel ion due to inverse structure but experimentally we observed that the, there are 2.3 bohr magnetrons so if we can consider the interaction is anti ferromagnetic along with neil suggestions the net magnetic moment per molecule is difference of 7 bohr magnetron that means b sides and 5 bohr magnetron a sides this is closely in agreement with experimental data so nickel ferrite is a ferri magnetic material in the case of zinc ferrite zn fe2o4 which has a normal or regular structure the a sides are entirely occupied by the non magnetic zinc ion and ferri ion or in the b side here a b interaction are zero due to no magnetic moment in a sides the ferric ions in b sides are aligned anti parallel through the anti ferromagnetic bb interaction so bb and aa interaction are zero so that zinc ferrite shows no magnetization and it is an anti ferromagnetic material even though it is a ferrite now we move on to application of ferrites ferrites are used to produce low frequency ultrasonic waves by magnetostriction principle ferrite rod are used in radio receiver in particular medium wave coil to increase the sensitivity and selectivity of receiver ferrites are used as cores in audio and tv transformers since for ferrites ed current loss and stress loss are small at microwave frequencies these are widely used in non reciprocal microwave devices gyrators isolators circulator are the most important things of the ferrite devices and also bistable element magnetic strip register magnetic bubbles these are the most important things in the soft magnetic material in particular ferrites the applications of ferrites extended in gyrator isolator circulator and ferrite also used in digital computers and data processing circuits normally here ferrites with rectangular stress loop are used as magnetic storage elements dear student we will discuss the application of ferrites in the next episode thank you